In this edition of the Caribbean Cooking School, we interview Chef Natasha Ford, originally from Barbados, now residing in New York, USA. Natasha has appeared on TV cooking programs such as Cutthroat Kitchen and The Taste. We ask her about how she entered the profession, her events, and what for her is the taste of Barbados when served on a plate. And I should be able to identify the fish. Come on, Frenchie, what's going on with you, Eric? But it's cooked perfectly. What made you actually say, you know what, I found my vocation. So it's not the professions as my parents would have wanted, but it's something that, yes, this is what I've always wanted. Well, going from, from the French culinary right into the natural gourmet, that's what the school I went to. Um, you know, uh, and I remember also taking an apprenticeship program called Food Therapy, because um, I'm certified in Food Therapy, which was a very intense, very specific program. I knew this was always what I was meant to do. It just felt completely natural. Um, and just all the different things that showed up in my life as a result. One was a James Beard Scholarship Award um, in, to attend culinary school. Um, and just all the other different things that started to play itself out just helped me to understand that, you know, um, this is, I'm headed in the right direction. This is what I was born to do. This is what I need to do in life. And I know for sure that I'm headed in the right direction. Now that you're based in the U.S., you're also going to be surrounded by different um, cuisines from other yes. cultures. So you've yes. got your Caribbean-based background. For sure. You've got what you've been taught at culinary school and then what you may have been introduced to through just socialising and meeting with other people in your profession. Yes. So how do you look at those influences or learn from them or how do you see those being similar to what you've grown up with as well? It's interesting because, to me, with all the different cuisine, I mean, every chef has their thing. I, I, I feel as though there's the fine dining chef, there's the restaurant chefs, there's the catering chefs. Like you said, there's so the, the culinary world is like a whole another world within its own, which it really is. And for me, just being introduced to all these different flavors and cultures is so amazing how, to me, the Caribbean has so much of those outside influences. I mean, one, when the world changed, a lot of different worlds from Europe to Africa to India passed through the Caribbean going to the New Americas and really for trade, for all the different, you know, things. Um, and as a result, the Caribbean has so many different tastes that mimic the outside world that's collided itself into the U.S. Um, because U.S. ideally was considered the new world, wasn't it? So the interesting part perspective for that for me, and I think the benefit, you know, being a Barbadian-born chef is that I can look at most cuisines, whether it's a Thai cuisine, an Italian cuisine, and see how you can inject island flavors into those cuisines because of the fact that the Caribbean has so many different touches of influences, for lack of better words. Comparing the food you grew up with compared to what they call the African-American experience, which they base around soul food, how mm -hmm. different or how similar is it? Well, I'm not a big fan of soul food because I think it's a little, you know, all that frying is a bit much and I'm not used to all that frying. Um, I mean, even though in Barbados we have quite a bit of fried food too, but... Um, I would say there's a lot of differences simply because um, a lot of the foods, but there's so much similarities to at the same time, like things like chicklins in Barbados, we call it pudding. It, the, the stuffings might be a little bit different, but the concept is still the same. Um, you know, we have cuckoo, um, which originated from Africa was fufu. And in the um, soul food arena, they have um, the gumbo, which is okra based. So you can see like the crossover in many ways, but I definitely believe that the American soul food is very indigenous to America itself. Um, you know, and um, it has a very strong American ethnic background. Moving on, you're going to shortly be hosting your own event based around rum tasting and cupcakes. Well, there's a couple of things all spinning at the same time. Um, I'm sure 
as you know, I had the honor of being scouted and competed on two shows on television. One was for Food Network Cutthroat Kitchen, and the other one, I was a contestant recently on The Taste. And I know you guys had one in the UK. Um, and I, um, after that, things just <coughs> changed significantly. And um, I have really looked at the idea of I love teaching, and I love you know, sharing, like I said, from childhood, the experience of food with others. And so I decided it was time for me to really venture heavily into teaching cooking classes. I've been teaching kids for the past um, couple of months, you know, more intensively about just helping them, you know, understand their relationship with food and their bodies and just exploring so many different flavors. And I said it was time for me to do that also with the adults a little bit more than just casually. So I erected, um, I got with my team, and we decided to start having unique cooking parties. Not the traditional cooking classes, but themes based around different concepts. As you know, Barbados is the, um, the, the founder of distilled rum, and we have one of the oldest rum distilleries in Barbados um, in the Western civilization, and um, I wanted to have my first class highlight my Bayesian background, my understanding of rum. You know, I'm hopefully going to be working with Coxpur and sponsoring, having them sponsor the event and allow people to cook all different types of food with rum. Um, so we're going to do some, like, for instance, one of the dishes that I'm going to put, we're going to prepare is the traditional vodka dish where um, the vodka, the sauce, I'm sorry, um, instead of using vodka, we're going to use rum. So, um, and to me, to, to kind of top it all off, to have some delicious cupcakes that is filled with some rum is like the ending of a great class. So I wanted to just create that whole just idea and just bring home, you know, Barbados to the American world. Because I feel like Barbados is kind of the underdog island here. Um, when it comes to its cuisines, but then also be able to introduce, you know, myself as a chef to the New Yorkers and also introduce Barbados because I'm definitely doing a food tour next year as well where I'm taking people to Barbados to just experience that authentic cuisine. It was like I said, it was a mouthful, but it's kind of like I'm cross-marketing the, the food tour as well as, you know, introducing Barbados cuisine to the U.S. to give them a reason to come to the food tour next year. So share with us a bit about the trip going back to Barbados for 2016 and why do you think that was an important thing for you to do? Um, well, one, I wanted to share my world of Barbados because, like I said, I think Barbados, everyone knows Barbados for Rihanna um, and music. But very rarely people really associate Barbados with the authentic food experience. And the foodie world, I've noticed that a lot in conversation with a lot of people who are foodies, the foodie following, um, that they don't really, if I say, well, let's come to Barbados to go see Rihanna, everyone would be on board because then you'll have the music followers. But the food followers are like, okay, well, what are we going to go there and eat? What is authentic about Barbadian food and cuisine? I mean, Barbados has a major influence from the English and also North Africa, like with cuckoo and flying fish, which is one of our national dishes. Um, the whole concept of cuckoo came from fufu from in Africa. Um, as you know, it's a lot of similarities to that. We've kind of just added the okras and a little bit of a variation. So, and a lot of times when people go to Barbados, they tend to usually stay at the hotel and they'll try to find things, maybe go to... Um, Shafet or one or two other places and they will kind of come away with, okay, I love the island, I love your beaches, but you really hear anyone talk about, well, I went to Barbados and had a fantastic time eating my way through Barbados. So the whole idea of the tour is that people are going to eat their way through the island. So it's going to be an extremely all-inclusive perspective um, where you are not going to, they're not, the person's not going to pay for anything. They're going to just get off that plane. And from the time they hit the floor, we're going to eat from the beginning all the way back to the airport. Um, we're going to go to Bridgetown. We're going to try a lot of authentic foods. We're going to go to Oysters. We're going to go on the catamaran and party and eat, 
you know, um, fish cakes and bakes for breakfast. Um, we're going to have a moonlit mahogany fields dinner where it's going to have sauce and jug jug and, you know, soursop punch and all these different fantastic, very Barbadian count salad, those kind of things. I want to definitely have people eat and taste from the Barbados cuisines um, and just walk away completely mesmerized, not just by the beautiful island and its beautiful beaches, but also by its beautiful food. We're going to have an exclusive cooking class with myself, um, and I am going to actually cook some of the food that um, Nigella Lawson and Anthony Bourdain fell in love with, um, just to give people a taste of some fusions with some not so traditional Barbados food. <laughs> okay, and why do you love confused food? Yes, I certainly love confused food. The reason why I said that is because I feel like all food is confused. <laughs> um, in my perspective, when you trace back, like you said, even with the, um, the African-American soul food, it has so much different influences, like macaroni and cheese, like you said, can be traced back to Italy with pasta. You know, um, I think, like for instance, Katie, I've had lasagna made by Haitians in America, and I think they can create some wicked lasagna, even though they have a heavy French influence in their food with their black rice and different things. Um, and like you said, with Trinidad, they have the whole curry piece where a lot of it comes from India. And then Barbados has their own immigration of India who bought that whole Caribbean, you know, curry-based stews that we have in Barbados. Um, and the way we do our rotis are a little bit different. So to me, you know, when you say Caribbean, I feel like, but the food in the Caribbean is confused anyway. <laughs> because we have a heavy, heavy influence from the, in, you know, different people coming through the Caribbean, whether it was for trade, slavery, indentured servitude, you know, Chinese was in um, in Jamaica, even though Jamaica has a jerkin process, if you look at the way they, the concepts around food also has a heavy Chinese influence as well, with their stir fried rice version of the traditional Chinese fried rice kind of thing. So, and then like I said, when everyone came now from the Caribbean to the New Americas, you know, and then meeting the Indians here, all the food just became extremely confused. For me, that's my perspective of it. So I feel like food is what you make it. You know, everyone has a different outlook on food, but I feel like when you create something, when you take something up in your hands and you decide to make a, 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 how do I put it? Like, I feel like food is a craft. If I pick up an apple, I look at all the possibilities of what that apple can be, and I create my own twist on it, and my goal is for people to enjoy it. So it could be excessively confused or it could be excessively simple for the lack of perspective, you know, in terms of flavors. Okay. Where can people find out about the event you're looking to host and also find out information about the trip for 2016? So they'll be able to go to our website and that website is natashachef.com. So that's N-A-T-A-S-H-A-C-H-E-F.com. Um, I would also have it on my Facebook account and also on Twitter and other social media. So if you look my name up, Chef Natasha Ford or Natasha Ford on Facebook, you'll be able to find information for the event, as well as the same thing for the food tour. We're going to launch advertising. We're just kind of confirming all of our sponsors. And by September, October, we will be actually having an official launch um, event and full blast social media um, events for the food tour, which is going to commence actually next year in January, February. So for people to get out of the cold, and then we're going to work it all the way down to the end of the year. <laughs>